Hello and welcome to Study History with Mr P. Today I'm going to explore the feudal system in Norman England with you. So the feudal hierarchy in Anglo-Saxon England had the King William I at the top of the chain. He of course granted land and tax concessions to his fo royal followers. He provided peace, tax, um, protection and so on in return for loyalty and service. So this was granted to his tenants-in-chief who were expected to provide night service according to a set quota um, and pay tax and administer justice. Now these tenants-in-chief were large landowners themselves so they granted land and privileges to their under-tenants um, who in return provided military service in return for their land, they paid tax on their land and again were involved in the justice system. Now the under-tenants uh, provided land to be worked on by the peasants who in turn also provided land service and worked on their land. Now the tenants-in-chief uh, owned far less land than the traditional Anglo-Saxon elves, but these, norm these Norman tenants-in-chief were still vast landowners with a number of roles. Their military role was that they were expected to fight with William to lead their knights to defend their fiefs and to put down opposition to Norman rule. Their social role involved providing knights for the king. They used their land to do this, and at the cent they were also at the centre of the distribution of land, and they organised the transfer of land holding from Anglo-Saxons to Normans. Socially, well, they owned a large number of fiefs, and they had their own courts, judging the case of tenants and sorting out disputes. Economically, the tenants-in-chief were important too. They owed the king a share of all the revenue produced by their fiefs, but they also kept a share for themselves, which made many of them very wealthy. And politically, well, the tenants-in-chief often served on the royal council, advising the king, and they also provided food, accommodation and the like to the king and his court as it travelled around the country. So below them sat the under-tenants, often the knights, and, they, and knight service was incredibly important in Norman times. So some knights were only granted a small amount of land, whilst others became very powerful. Their role was to guard their lord's property, to ride out, to combat any threat, and to provide 40 days night service to the king. Knights were important in suppressing opposition, and castles were used both to retreat to and as bases to launch attacks from. And they were also socially important. In, in effect, the knights replaced the thanes as the under-tenants in society. So feudalism itself was a, a rather wide system, um, and the nature of feudalism takes the following forms. First of all, land holding. William, as king, owned all the land. Anglo-Saxons were used to passing land on to their heirs. In Norman England, the heir, though, had to prove his loyalty to the king and pay for the right to use the land. This payment was called a relief. Now, this system encouraged loyalty because William decided how much the relief was, so his most loyal followers paid the least, and the new heir also had to perform the ceremony of homage. This was when William granted land to a tenant-in-chief and the ceremony of homage took place to demonstrate allegiance to the king for the rest of his life. The tenant-in-chief carried out similar services with his under-tenants. Labour service meant working the Lord's land in return for the use of the land and a peasant would farm their own land too. And forfeiture was a punishment for breaking the relationship between the landowner and tenant. If a landowner or land user sorry, did not provide the service required of them, they could forfeit their land or pay a fine.